Hey everybody, I am Kevin Ioli and welcome to Yahoo Sports. My privilege once again, wasn't too long ago that I was with Deontay Wilder, the heavyweight champ of the world, and he's got a big fight coming up February 22nd on pay-per-view, Fox, ESPN Plus pay-per-view in my hometown, the great Las Vegas, Nevada, Mr. Deontay Wilder. Champ, hey, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. How are you? I am doing awesome and I'm really excited to see you fight. Uh, this is going to be... A hell of a fight because you fought once before, and that was a memorable fight. What are your greatest memories of that first fight? Uh, well, of course, just right off the bat, you know, uh, the only memorable thing everyone talks about is the knockout. You know, I, I have to go straight there. I have to go straight there because, you know, I gave him a nice right hand left hook, you know, that, that, that put him to the ground. And, um, Unfortunately, he risen up, you know, so it, it was a it was amazing fight, especially that, that during that time, you know, the heavyweight division, you know, on fire and we continue to add add fuel to the fire, right. especially with that fight right there and then go on and have a controversial decision. And here we are now, you know, I'm I'm excited to be here, you know, from where I came and, and where we are now to make the, where the division came from right. and where the division is right now. You know, it's amazing. And it's just a blessing to be a part of it. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I wrote a story about your fifth anniversary as heavyweight champion. I was there when you won the title that night against uh, Berman uh, Stavern in Las Vegas. What do you think of when you think of the five years that you've been heavyweight champion? You've really transformed a lot from a guy people had a lot of questions about to now maybe the number one heavyweight in the world. Yes, um, it's an amazing feeling. You know, uh, it took a lot of hard work to get here, and we're still working. You know, I, I got when I set my goals, I set it so high that 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 you know us as human, many would say it's impossible. But I always say I know a man to make the impossible possible. And you know, I always tell people about providing their service to their greatness because we all are great. You know, and and I'm the type of person that lead by example, and I've been leading by example, and I'm still gonna do it you know, until the end of my career. And with that being said, as me been have, having to contribute my 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 service to my greatness, it allowed me to, you know, just say looking down on the heavyweights. <laughs> you know, the thing that I think is interesting about you, uh, kind of like Ali back in his day, we were mentioning Ali before we started uh, filming this, uh, Ali got to meet all sorts of unusual people, presidents and kings and, you know, everybody. You got a chance to meet Pope Francis. Uh, what was that like? And, and tell me how that came about. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing, I, I must say, you know. Um, I mean, my life is blessed, you know. I, I've been, you know, meeting so many different people, being in so many different places, you know, around the world at so, so many different, you know, time in my life. And meeting the Pope was it was amazing. It was a humbling experience as well. And he's every bit of what, what, you know, I thought he would be and what others would say as well. You know, he loved all race, uh, you know, all the human race. And it's amazing just to be able to interact with him and see him interact with others as well with nothing but love, you know, nothing but love. And, you know, I, I took my fiance with me. She's Catholic. So, you know, it was even bigger you know, a moment for her. He blessed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the rosaries and, and all the blessings. And, you know, he's a big boxing fan as well. So really? when you come in, you know, to meet the Pope and you know that he's he has interest, high interest in your your profession, you know, because I'm not guys. Don't tell me he did not see you fight. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't well, I, I, didn't, I didn't ask him that far. I didn't want to get all in his business like that. You snuck and saw that, 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 that. That uh, Brazil fight, <laughs> but uh, or that Luis Ortiz fight, you know. So um, maybe this fight coming up, hey Pope, click that button if you can't be there. <laughs> and you were it's on Fox. Like, so he named you the ambassador of peace. Yes, most stuff. You know, it's it's amazing feeling to to everything is just amazing, man. I might say, <laughs> you know, to uh, name me the boxer ambassador of peace, and you know, my profession is so so. <laughs> Is 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 like it's opposite of peace. I right. knock men's out. I, I I knock their brains out of their head, literally, you know. And it just all over the canvas. And their body does weird things right. once that happens. And I'm I'm also the ambassador of peace. Right. You know. Um, when I look at it, it's like it resembles me who I am. Right. You know. Uh, You're a diverse I'm, person. I'm most uh, all every bit of the word of it. You know. Outside of the ring, I'm a peaceful man. You know. Right. I, I love people. All people. You know, I'm the type of person who like to motivate you. 
inspire you to do great things, you know, no matter what you think. You know, I tell people my mindset is so big that a spaceship could fit in it, so I'm open-minded to a lot of things, and I like that. I always try to allow other people to try to see it that way, like, this is a big world. Use your mind. You can do anything in the world that you want to do, no matter what. And then on the opposite side, you know, when it's time for, for you know, events like February the 22nd hey, you come. with the Fury and Wilder 2, I have to transform into the Bronze Bomber. Is there, is there a switch that goes off at some point when you're walking to the arena and you're in the locker room? When does it change? Uh, you know, it changed during preparation, you know, in camp. Camp is the hardest of it all, of this lifestyle, you know, being a fighter. I don't know anyone that really enjoys, enjoys camp because it breaks your body down. It breaks your mind down, and you have to build it all back up. You know, it's a roller coaster. You go up and down. Although I'm very dominant, you know, I'm very strong, opinionated, you know, many times I feel like quit. Many times I'm, man, I ain't going to do this no more. Get hit, you know. Okay. Those thoughts go through your head, but at the at the same time, it's like the love, the L-O-V-E for this sport. <laughs> the, Ali made that comment. And this is an exact quote, but he said, "I hated every minute of training, mm. but I loved uh, you know being the champion and what the results were." And is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, it's definitely what I'm saying. You know, no no one wants to go through the the heartaches, the pain, the sacrifice from your family. You know, and and you know, all the recovery that you have to do because of all the punishment and the pounding that's been been put on your body, whether it's through training or sparring. And sparring, you know, I have so many guys all over the world come in, and these are big guys, right. you know, and <laughs> most of these guys getting out at some point in time while I'm still standing in there. Right. So, which is, 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 is good for me. You know, it's good for us all for us training and how much we put into it. You know, right. we all, you know, training is only what you put into it. You know, some guys go into training and don't take it seriously, serious enough. And when they get into the fight, then, you know, results, they get the results what they, what they deserve. You know? I want to get into the fight, but, you know, you said you're an open book and you talked about heartache and everything that you've been through. Fury's personal issues are well documented and I mean it's an incredible story where he's driving his car he's going to drive into a wall and kill himself and now here he is uh, fighting for uh, the recognition as the number one heavyweight in the world you also had some issues I saw at the last press conference you you shared with some reporters I wasn't there but you shared with some reporters that maybe you thought about ending your own life and how could it get so bad I look at you and I say this is a happy guy a guy who has everything how could it have gotten so bad or well, you know, we, we all have a, 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 a past story, you know, we all have came from somewhere to make us who we are right now, you know, and yeah. 19 and 20, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of hardship going on in my life, you know, um, I had a daughter that was born with spina bifida as well, and just trying to make it, you know, as a young man living in the world, real world, you know, trying to provide and, and, and survive for my family, you right. know, and I always had big goals and big dreams. You know, my mindset is always, you know, as of a king, sure. you know, but sometimes life can pull you down. Right. It can weigh you down until you just break those shackles off your feet yourself. But <laughs> self has to do that because at one point in time, I did have a gun in my lap. I did thought about, you know, if, you know, committing suicide, mm. feeling like, you know, if, I, if you know, if you do this, then you ain't got to worry about nothing else. You know what I'm saying? You got to worry about the, the troubles, the heartaches, the things that's going on in your life right now that's occurring. You know, you think about right now, but long jeopardy, you don't think about what effect it will cause on your family, your right. daughter, your kids, and so forth and so on. Because in that state of mind, you just become selfish. You just think about, you, you know, the, the inner pain and the outer pain that you're feeling right at that very moment in time. And, you know, sometimes things used to hit my mind like that, but every every time it hit, you know, I used to take a shower or, or, or sleep it off. And when I wake up, I was in a new, um, a new state of mind, and uh, I was ready for the world every yeah. time. I think it's important to note that, and you're a great example of this, that there's help for people, that it's not a hopeless situation. You went from a situation where you're thinking about taking your life to, both you guys in this title fight, both thought about taking your life. Here you are now, a millionaire. You're living a great life. You're you're one of the most famous people in the world. So, isn't that a message that you're trying to convey to to the public as well? Oh yes. You know um, that's why I always say I provide my service to my greatness. You know, uh, if I would have done that during that time, I would. Of course, I would have never, you know, been where I am. You know, but uh, 
Life does you like that, no matter what. You know, we can't see ahead like it's just like with my fight, and I can see ahead. I can visualize. I can, I can, I, I can see my fights and stuff like that. You know, but it took me a long time to get my mind to this point to right. where I'm, the things that I'm into right now to be able to allow me to use my mind into a visual, uh, a, a virtual reality, or you know, visualization while meditating. You know, to see further and beyond and say, wow. I can expect, if I can see the thing and I apply principles more and goals, I can get there. But during those times, you can't see ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you only see what now and and things just come in. But um, you know, it just um, you know, I'm just happy to be here at this point in time. You know, uh, because if we, if I could see myself being the champion, having millions of dollars in the bank, having a, a, a successful right. career in life. Of course, we would have never thought, like, man, I'm just yeah. going to shit. I'm going to shit. If all I had to do is sleep at all, I'm going right. to go on the start right now in the car, you know. But that's just the thing about life, though, you know. It, 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 yeah. it comes in all types of ways, and it's up to you to be able to handle it. Let's Before we get into the fight, let's go with this, because I think this is an interesting aspect. You know, everybody says sometimes, hey, I want to be rich, I want to be famous, but there's not always, there's downsides to being rich and famous, mm -hmm. too, right? Where do you find some of the downsides? We know what the perks are, meeting the Pope and, and doing all the, you know, the nice things that you get to do. But what are the downsides of being a rich and famous guy in, in this culture today? Well, Especially a black man in this yeah. culture. Yeah, for sure. Well, firstly, first, first off, mon money don't make you happy. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, money is only temporary. Temporarily, you, you become happy. Temporarily, it, you, you, you have friends around. You get to do all these different things until it run out. You right. know what I'm saying? And with with I always tell people with money, you know that ain't the ultimate reason of why I'm happy. You know, happiness come within yourself. Right. <laughs> you know, because even when you know times I didn't have no money, at times I, I was happy. Right. Uh, you know, I ain't had to worry about rich problems. And when you right. become when you have money, more more, pro more money, more much. problems, as they say. And you know, you get a lot of people that want to surround you, and you know, you always the bank. Because everybody always right. wanna 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 borrow money. How many cousins do you have now that you didn't know before? Yeah, you have an army of cousins, you know, and and <laughs> and it's it's always it's a constant it's a constant cycle of people reaching out, trying, to, you know, looking for help, you know, want help, want this, they need this, they need this money, they need you know, even go down to the point where they say, God said you're gonna bless me with some money. Mm -hmm. You know, God said he did wow, you know. The champ is gonna, you know, I, my trainer that came with me with certain things like that and yeah. stuff, and you, and the thing about it, like I love having people. I help people so much because I have it to give, right. you know. But I can't, I can't ignore the fact that even the smallest number adds up. Right, of course. And, yeah, I can't give you all of it. I can't get everybody. I can't share that love to everyone. It has to go in certain stages of my career, you know right. what I'm saying? The way I could just pinpoint, like, all right, I'm going to help this person. I don't even know this person, but, you know, they about to lose the house. Let me help this person. Or their children need this and that. Like, I do so much, and I never I never acknowledge that. I never, you know, I do a lot of events back home for the kids. I never get media or nothing like that because I always tell me the family that I'm doing it for and myself and God know. You know, that's 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 all need I need. It, I Man, I'm so problem. blessed. That's all I need. And what works for me works for me, you know. I've seen a change in you in this sense. You know, I remember when you first became, uh, after you won the gold medal and you went into the pros, you, know, you promoted Deontay, the boxer, I thought. Mm. And now it's like I remember talking to you, and, and almost now you're promoting boxing. You're promoting the sport. You're promoting other fighters. And, you know, that's why I kind of said I thought that, you know, you had single-handedly kind of changed, you know, changed the division. So this fight, you know, you're, you're working on that, and you're doing a ton of interviews as is as Tyson. Why the change? Like, why do you feel like instead of just making it about you, you you're making it almost about the division and the sport as well as just about you? Yes. When I look at the whole, the whole, the, the landscape of boxing is like, and I'm I'm always talking about us risking our lives, right. and it ain't just me. Right. It's, it's it's the whole family of us, and, you know. And, and you know, I love I love I love us fighters. You know, we're some special people. You know, I ain't talking about in the head either, crazy. But uh, like overall, like with some with some special people, and you know, uh, loving people, you know, people that'll have your back no matter what, you know, and just down for you, the protector, providers. And I've seen so many of us, you know, in boxing, and you know, instead of just being by myself, I like I, 
I spread the message among the world right. about us all. We're all, we're all a family. That's how I look at it. Although right. we have to fight, you know, family fight. Sisters and brothers, we fight, you know what I'm saying? But as a whole, when I look at it, we're risking our lives for others' entertainment. And, and, and that right there, life, you can't put a price on that. How do you square that? The fact that your job, you know, when you walk in there, you may not walk out. We saw, you know, we've seen, you know, the, uh, in 2019, several fighters lost their lives. Patrick Day and, uh, and a couple other fighters. Like, how do you square that? Yeah, and, and the prayers goes out to the, to the warriors that lost their life in the ring, you know. It's just one of those things you had to come come with peace with yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Tough. Yeah, you can't be too naive and say, "Well, that ain't gonna happen to me. I'm a great boxer. I can move. I'm gonna get out of the way." The object of boxing is to hit and not be hit. Right. That's in the book, the the the, the boxing Bible. Right. You know, one of the golden rules. But you just never know what type of night you're gonna have. You know, you never know what dog gonna come at you at that fight. You know. We all feel like we're ready. We all sometimes feel like, oh, we're in the best shape of our life. But when them lights hit and you got all those thousands of peoples in there and everybody count on you, right. things start to feel a little funny now. Yeah. You feel like you got some type of responsibility. And if you're not a if you're not if you're not a king that can handle responsibility and everybody win on you at that moment in time, then things can happen. And it only takes it only takes just one second, two seconds. I always say two. I say people, y'all say, hey. My guys, they got to be perfect for 12 rounds, 36 minutes. I don't have to be perfect for two seconds. And that's the truth. I've showed it for tw um, 12 The Luis Ortiz fight. Let, I mean, I tweeted during the fight to show you what I know about boxing. I tweeted during the fight. I said, Deontay had the flu the first time he fought Luis Ortiz. And I swear he has the flu now because he's not throwing punches. Like, and you were standing there with that right hand cocked. Yes, I'm sir. going, what is this guy doing? He's never throwing. He's never. Your, Ortiz is winning round after round. How didn't you have the patience to do that and just kind of wait that long? Because I kept thinking, you're blowing the fight. You're blowing the fight. What are you doing? And then, boom, the fight was over. Like, tell me about that. I'm so advanced to what people think. You know, my IQ in the ring, you know, my intellect is so high than what people think. You know, I think I mesmerize people so much by just knocking people out with my right hand. So when I fight... That's what they're expecting, hand, right, right off bat. You know, they ain't expecting no, no, no jabs, no left hooks. Right. They're looking for when that right hand lands. And after that lands, let's see what his opponent does. Right. You know, he may do a little dance, you know. <laughs> and with that being said, I, I mean, I don't blame them. You know, that's why I don't have no type of hardship for people not understanding the skill level of me because, you know, you have to have some type of skill to be able to hit the target. But generally you're trying to walk guys into a shot so you faint or you do things that you're trying to move th there. You were just kind of walking around with that right hand like ready to go and I'm going like, I'm trying to figure out what you're doing and what you're thinking and I, I, I just couldn't follow it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to let you give me all the credit of being a gladiator and just walking through punches. I, I, mo I moved my head a couple of times now. <laughs> You know, but uh, I was just, it's, it's just something about being in there with him the first time. Right. I understood, you know, him even more. It was a, a, a clearer. Um, a clearer picture? Yes. The second time around because I know what he wants to do. Uh, I know his style, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more than I did the first time. So with that being said, I went back at the tapes. I was looking at, you know, certain times where I were when I landed and how my feet positioning uh, was, and certain time when he landed, you know, where, where my feet positioning yeah. was, you know what I'm saying? So the times that I was landing and I had perfect angle, you know, like, you know, I took, I took, I took heat of that, like, okay. So uh, footwork so, with yeah, 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 so I had to really just position, with, with Ortiz, him being such a, uh, such a skillful and, and intelligent southpaw, you have to be very smart with him. That's the reason why none of these top heavyweights are none of them, you know, making any type of motion to fight him right. because he's very smart enough. You know, the people talk Human, about age and all that, man, but that goes out the window because we still have guys right now that's in the ranking that's 40, 41, or whatever that can't talk and still fight right now, but right. people ain't having no problem fighting them. So when I went back and looked at that, I had to, I had, I had to change certain things, my adjustment. And in that fight, I had to stay calm because I was looking for certain 
you know, events and activities that happened from the first time, but then adding on what we do in the new one. Exactly. Little did I know we were going to call you Deontay Lomachenko with that <laughs> footwork. I mean, that was incredible. <laughs> well, you know, so you mentioned that uh, you learned from the Ortiz fight. So now you're doing a rematch with, with Tyson. He's claiming, you know, he was only in his third fight after having been off for all those years, blowing up to 400 pounds and almost committing suicide. So he's going to be better. You're now saying, hey, I understand how a guy fights. I'm going to be better. So it's kind of almost like the immovable object and your resistible force going on there. Uh, how do you see the fight playing out? Is it going to be this, a similar fight or do you think it'll change based on the fact that you know each other so well? Well, you know, at this point in my, my career, everyone knows how, what I think how the fight is going to go. You know, I'm very open opinionated about it. I'm going to knock them out. Come mm. on. <laughs> but, you know, uh, going back, you know, talking about the training part, you know, I bet the different one Fury say that he was, you know, wasn't in shape for the first one and stuff. He was, he was in damn good shape. Yeah. You know, he had, what, two training camps, two warm-ups, and, and then the, uh, we had three training camps, two warm-ups, and then me. So, and then what, five or six trainers? Right. If you're not in shape from that and you're spending all that money, then God bless and you. You lost 150 something. You, yeah. You, and you know, you know how you a professional fighter, you know how to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring all these people in, you have all these warm ups. I mean, I was, you know, before him coming back having the warm ups, I, I was out longer than him and coming back after his warm ups to fight. You know, I only, I didn't have no warm ups. Now you weigh what, 212 for that fight, I think it was? 212, I came in. I think at the Too end, light? 212. Two then they, they gave me an official weigh-in. They came in, which I never seen. It was kind of strange. I almost got a little mad, but I just went on with the process because I never had them to come and weigh me in before I go out there talking right. about an official weigh-in. Right. You know, um, kind of almost felt like it was bad luck or something. Um, but I weighed in. I was 209, and I could not believe it. I'm yeah. like, what did I do? <laughs> it was just work? <laughs> it wasn't you were sick or nothing? You know, I had a little... I had a little you know, you know, mucus and stuff spinning up afterwards. You know, Shelly always, he always get concerned when he see that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's different things. But, you know, I, I make it be known what, what's going through. But, you know what, my mindset is so strong that I'm going to fight through. And then after the fight, I probably was about 205. You could have fought you know. cruiserweight at that point. Yo, for real. I mean, I would have stepped any challenge then. <laughs> well, two more things let's, let's talk about. If, conventional wisdom would be he's got a great jab. He's got an 85-inch reach, bigger than you. He keeps that jab in your face. It's going to be hard for you to land that big right hand. Who's this? That, that, I said that's conventional wisdom that Fury keeps uh -huh. that jab in your face, right? Mm -hmm. You know, people think if he keeps that jab popping that you're not going to be able to land that right hand. How, how is that theory flawed? Well, you know, for me, I'm a fighter as well. You know, if he have a certain type of mechanism a strategy that he wants to use, I, I as well. It's my, it's my job to right. be able to... To, to defend his offense, mm -hmm. as well as him defending my offense. May the best man win. May the, the strongest mind, you know, get to the get to the to the punch. You know, it's all about, you know, when you're boxing, you have to stand on your feet for for 36 minutes. You're moving everything. All your body is moving. Your brain is moving. Everything is moving. You know, and 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 what I mean by moving means it's working. You know, uh, you're trying to figure out so many things while using your body and still maintaining a, 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 a clear mind of trying to come and use what you know, right. you know. So it's very, it's a challenge up in there. Boxing is, is, is a very, very difficult sport to get in because you have to use so much at one time. So, you know, with that being said, I'm, I'm look, I'm the longest reigning champion, definitely in the heavyweight, five years as a champion. And um, I wouldn't be here this long, knocking guys out, you know, for 12 years. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't know how to get through all that stuff like that, you know. So let them break it on. My thing is just don't get tired, you know. What impact do you think uh, the new trainer, you know, he got rid of uh, Ben Davison. Mm -hmm. I, I guess they're still friends, but he felt like he wasn't improving. He's got Javon Sugar Hill Stewart uh, in his corner. What impact will that have, if any? And will it make it harder for you to prepare since you don't know what Stewart's going to have? Just like I told Dominique Brazil, you know. Same situation. It ain't, ain't going to help. Right. It ain't going to help at all. They talking about send down more on his punches and coming. To, they coming to fight this time instead of box. And all that, you know, it's, it sounds good for promotion and to get the people interested. But, you know, 
you trying to change up something that you never done in your career ever before. We, we, we don't know Fury as a puncher, uh, a power puncher. You know, we know him for a sin back, you know, doing... He said he rocked things. you in the last fight, though. Nah, never. Never. He never rocked me. You don't have, you know, his, his fist is made of pillows, you know. <laughs> and he ain't putting nobody to sleep, okay? It's just there for comfort. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't... His strategy, I don't... I don't it's not gonna. It's not gonna work at all unless he's just trying to get these people a show. He's he's gonna get knocked out, you know. And that's just bottom line. I, I I think he put so much into the first one because they all do. When you find Deontay Wilder, and I don't blame you, when you find Deontay Wilder, you they're giving me their A plus plus because right. they know the severeness of this fight. This is not a particular. This is not an ordinary type of fight when you find me, no. because they know my demeanor, they know my mindset, and how strong willed that I am that I am, right. and what I say I mean. I really walk it like I talk yeah. it. And when I'm coming into that fight, they know that Deontay Wilder come to do one thing, like he done to every other opponent that came before me, you know. And the only thing they can do is try to survive. But with that being said, they do all the necessary needs and extra up in camp, up in certain things. They get all these different trends to try to come in and and still, please instill in me something to stay away from his right hand. You know, I don't want to get hit by that. I don't want to, you know, I don't want him to end my life because he already said he want a body before he retired. I ain't, I ain't, <laughs> I'm trying to be that first one. You know, with all that being said, these guys, they, they, they come for the best. And I just don't see that man coming in there and just wasting it all, just coming in and trying to give me a slug fest because you're going to lose. You're going to well, lose. As Don King would say, February 22nd, if you can't be on the scene, watch it on the screen. Right. Las Vegas, Nevada, MGM Grand, Deontay Water versus Tyson Fury, ESPN Plus, and Fox Pay-Per-View. Champ, good luck. Blessings. Thank Always you, a Deontay. pleasure.